The best influencers rack up followers, guide the zeitgeist, and monetize it all with paid content, although some of them don't actually exist. We're talking about animated influencers, digital avatars that can generate millions of euros through brand collaborations. They're the latest ambassadors of a brave new world known as the metaverse. Maybe for some people, the metaverse will prove to be an artificial paradise. But what's clear today is that a lot of companies that are investing colossal sums of money are very much seeing this as a new commercial paradise. So why is that? Well, because the metaverse is going to be a space where there's going to be a sort of gold rush for the early adopters, a sort of new wild west. There's also the idea that it will be a place where you can exchange real objects, buy them, sell them, but also virtual objects which creates another immense market in which each user is then able to create their own objects and also authenticate them. You know, the idea of the metaverse is really tied up with the idea of decentralized finance, that is, cryptocurrencies. So yes, for a lot of people, the metaverse is starting to feel like a very real online paradise. But of course, as we already know from social media, there's also the risk that people end up getting stuck in their own bubbles. So yes, there's a lot of hope, a lot of concerns too. We'll have to wait and see what comes of all of it. The metaverse will rely on creating bridges between the real world and the virtual world. Thanks to blockchain technology and NFTs, which mean the provenance of digital assets can now be authenticated, a company called Ariani is helping labels forge new relationships with their clients. With the creation of the internet, everything could immediately be copied. Music, images, no one actually owned anything. But today that's no longer the case. It's now possible to establish the real-world notions of rarity and possession in the digital realm. What does this mean for fashion brands? The first application is this idea of creating a digital copy of the physical object. You take an object, a sweatshirt in this case, and here's a button that allows you to connect this sweatshirt. And when you scan it with your phone, it takes you to the item's digital passport. That gives us loads of information about how it was made. It might also make it easier for us to resell it later, because we have proof of authenticity and ownership that we can use on second-hand selling platforms. The second major application is that it allows you to create objects that are solely digital, various elements that will enable us to translate the idea we have of ourselves in real life into the digital realm. And that can be through brands and labels we like. It's a way of being part of a community, a way to be recognized as a fan of something in particular, a specific label. The metaverse is also gaining traction across the fashion world. Julien Fournier is a couturier and also a big fan of video games. The fact of being able to project your personal universe into a virtual metaverse means we can really inspire a new appetite for the work we do among the new generation. Everyone's dreamed of one day going to some grand event and wearing a beautiful ball gown. And unfortunately, that's not a reality open to everyone in the real world. But people dream of that moment nonetheless. We can recreate these glamorous soirees, balls, dinners, these Hollywood-style red carpet events that people love. People can finally have those experiences for themselves virtually, with their avatars wearing robes by the biggest names in fashion, or they can wear outfits that are completely out there if they want to. Those are the possibilities the virtual world opens up to us, a way of projecting ourselves inside the metaverse. A world full of possibilities, then. The problem is, these days, people can really be quite insular. People can be very lonely as far as any social, sexual or intellectual identity is concerned. And so the idea of giving them an open window into the metaverse, well, that access is going to give them a new opportunity to self-define and also to meet other people. There's a huge amount of work that's going to be needed to go into building all of this, but ultimately, that's what this is going to be. And of course, the metaverse will only be interesting if it can provoke change in the real world too. But how the metaverse is structured will be key. 
If the economic model of the metaverse remains the same as the model we see on social media, that's going to be catastrophic. And what are the risks? Well, that the inequalities in the real world are simply replicated in the metaverse. We're talking about social inequalities, with some people who are able to understand the logic of these new networks, and also the potential pitfalls, and others who can't. And then there are the psychological inequalities, because some people will keep their distance from the positive aspects of it out of fear or anxiety. And there are also people who risk falling into compulsive or repetitive behaviour because of pre-existing psychological fragilities. So yes, all the inequalities, all our personal weaknesses risk finding themselves repeated and even amplified within the metaverse. And that's why we have to be extremely vigilant when it comes to the algorithms that are going to regulate this new space. Wherever you stand on the ethics right now, it seems next season's major trend in fashion is the metaverse. to the Rhythms of Africa, the Africa Cup of Nations, from January 9th to February 6th on France 24.